So welcome to the first build experience video. If you've seen our first videos, you'll figure out that we're doing things a little different. Uh, we'll be using a modern engine, but we'll be keeping the velocity airframe uh, pretty stock. So I want this series of build videos to show you our experiences during the build. Uh, it's not meant to be a step-by-step -step guide, um, although sometime in the future, I might uh, go into some more detail and provide some instructions. Um, so yeah, stay tuned for that. So for now, um, things are going slowly. Uh, it's not because it's hard or complicated. Uh, it's pretty easy, except this is my first time through and I'd like to get things right. So hopefully these videos will give you an idea of what to expect um, or to aid your decision in buying a Velocity. Um, maybe you're just interested. And, and seeing what's involved in building velocity. Uh, so if you want to use these videos uh, to aid with your build, um, then great. Um, but this is just going to show you what we did, uh, so our experiences. All right, let's get into it. This part looks simple. It is simple. But there's a lot of work setting up and checking things, like the wing spars are level, so everything goes right when it comes time for gluing. So the first thing I noticed, I was spending a lot of my time setting up for the job. The act of gluing the foam cores onto the wing spars was the quick and easy part. It was very stressful, but simple. The majority of the work was sanding the base of the foam cores, placing it onto the wing spars, and seeing if they're plumb. So that means that they are 90 degrees to the wing spar. And uh, probably did that about 20 times for each section. So after several days of stressing, checking, double checking, and finally giving up on finding perfection, we glued the foam cores onto the wing spar. And wouldn't you know it, we still didn't get it right. But we'll come back to that later. Relax, man. You gotta relax. Relax. Relax! So just my luck, the wing surface I decided to tackle first ended up giving me some grief. The problem I was having was the wing's trailing edge was supposed to be straight. It wasn't. Not even close. I don't know if it happened during production or if it's something I did wrong, but all I could tell is that the foam cores weren't the right shape to give the straight trailing edge I needed. After a week or three of trying to figure out what the problem was and how to solve it, I decided that the wing volume needed to be filled out more in the middle. The easier option was to cut several layers of foam strips about 7mm thick, glue them onto the wing and then sand them down to make the wing thicker in the middle so we had a straight trailing edge. After heaps of careful sanding and filling, I was happy with the end result. Come on, let's do this! I want to see some destruction! This was one of those moments where you follow the instructions exactly, but it turns out wrong anyway. The leading edge rib went on well. So, filled with confidence, I cut the foam for the trailing edge rib and soon figured out that I'd cut too deep into the wing when I test fitted the rib. Using some excess foam from the wing trailing edge adventure, I managed to fix this one pretty easily. I'm ready! I'm ready! I'm ready! I decided that I'd only do one nav antenna. Almost every other builder was ditching the RG58 cable and installing a premium quality RG400 coax cable. After a fair amount of research, I decided the extra cost and the wait time for delivery wasn't worth the sliver of benefit over the entirely suitable RG58 cable that was supplied in the kit.
So here's where the cheap eBay foam cutter and cheap shop hot glue gun really shined. The instructions here were very good, but I was a little disappointed that I had to make a trip to JCAR to get some clear heat shrink wrap. While the copper antenna was self-adhesive, it didn't stick for long to the foam. That was fine since I'm sure I'll have to prepare the foam and maybe even countersink the antenna before glassing anyway. Anyone know how many days it's been? I lost track. This is the fun bit. Sanding, filling, filling and sanding. The reason you'll fill twice is because the epoxy seeps into the foam. Once it's dry, the filler will sit below the level you left it at, leaving you to do it again. One hot tip is to make sure there are absolutely no high spots on the wing surface, but low spots are acceptable. The idea here is when the skin goes on, you can't sand the high parts out later without cutting the glass fibers. Any low spots can be filled with Veloc Epoxy over the top of the wind skin. How's this, Goodwin? It's beautiful! Gently. I mentioned earlier that we had some issues with getting the foam cores on straight. After glass in the bottom skin, I was doing some checking and I found that we had a twist in the wing. In the next video, I'll show you what we did to remove that twist. Uh, we'll start with skinning the bottom of the wing and we'll finish with skinning the top of the wing. See ya!